Hi, this is Pat Fiorello, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of Painting Beautiful Flowers. In today's lesson, I'm going to be doing a demonstration of painting white hydrangeas uh, in a silver pitcher. Uh, these are flowers that I picked uh, from right outside. They are called uh, strawberry hydrangeas. They are mostly white, but you'll see they have a really nice little hint of pink um, in, in part of the flowers. So they're really pretty, they're really delicate, and I thought they would make a really nice subject for today's painting. Here I'll be showing you the setup where I have the flowers um, in a, a tarnished silver pitcher. Um, I have a white um, uh, lit hydrangea on the uh, right side so that at the end of the painting you'll have something to catch the light. And I put the strawberries in there just to have a hint of a bright color and also kind of a nod to the fact that these are strawberry hydrangeas so I thought it would be kind of fun to have um, uh, something in there that reflected the um, the name of the product, the name of the flower. So um, you'll see it also gives me an opportunity to have a little red reflection into the silver. I had these uh, flowers in my studio and I lit them with just the uh, a window, a uh, window light, not the, my regular uh, lamp that I've got in the studio. I thought these were delicate and I wanted to have a little bit more of a delicate light. Here it is in um, you know black, white, and gray. Um, I do want this to feel a little bit more delicate, so I'm not going to push this all the way to as dark as this uh, photograph shows, but it does give me an idea of the light and shadow on the hydrangeas. Here's my palette. This is actually my outdoor um, palette, and I kept it very simple. I've got cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, cadmium red light, permanent rose, alizarin crimson, um, cinnabar green, uh, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, burnt umber, white, and naples yellow. Um, I didn't end up using the cobalt blue. Um, I believe I used all the other uh, colors though on this palette. Next, I went to my canvas. I used a 9 by 12 canvas. It has a light tone of burnt umber on the canvas, and I divided the canvas into thirds just to get a little bit of sense of placement where I wanted to place things on the canvas. The bouquet itself was much bigger than uh, this canvas, so I had to shrink things down to be able to um, uh, include it all on this canvas. The first thing I did then was try to make kind of an envelope or the big shape of the whole cluster of hydrangeas. I did not go for each individual hydrangea, but kind of considered that as an entire mass and put in that big shape. Um, I also put a center line here where I'm going to put the silver pitcher just to kind of find my way. Uh, usually they say don't put anything in the silver uh, in the center. But in this one, I do have the silver pitcher pretty much in the center, and the hydrangea, uh, center hydrangea, is going to be my focus. Here I started adding in with burnt umber some of the real darks and some of the mid-tones where there'll be you know, shadows, and then I wiped away where there's going to be the lightest areas on the hydrangeas just to give myself a little path of where I'm going to be going with the lights and the darks on this painting. Now that I've got my size and placement and shapes, you know, generally blocked in, I'm starting to come in and um, uh, add in the background. Uh, I went with a neutral color that was kind of um, a greenish, pinkish, you know, neutral color. Those are colors that I'm going to have in the painting anyway, so I thought that would go well. Um, it's actually a slight bit warmer than it shows up in this photo. Um, the silver is kind of cool. The white of the hydrangeas is kind of cool. 
So I did um, tip the background a little bit warmer, as you'll see as we get further along. This point, everything is very general. You can hardly even see where these hydrangeas in the background are going to be, but um, they'll be, you know, similar values since some of that is in the shadow. So they may kind of blend into the background, not this much, but a, but in that general direction. Here I started building up the silver pitcher. I start with the silver with some real darks. Um, silver is highly reflective, and then I start to put in the reflections of the hydrangea, the tabletop. Um, I'll get some of the hydra of the uh, strawberry reflection in there, and importantly, put in the the highlights. Silver uh, is highly reflective, so we need to get some strong highlights in there. Started to just block in where those strawberries are going to be, mostly with alizarin crimson. Um, the strawberries ended up getting pretty large, so you'll see later on. I came in and cropped them, um, you know, with the paint on the tabletop that was going to be around them so I could make them a little bit smaller. And here's where I started to really develop the shadows on the hydrangeas. Um, I used, again, a kind of a green and pink, uh, which will make somewhat of a neutral, but I let some of the colors pop through there. Um, the whole painting really is a, a complementary color scheme of uh, pinks and greens uh, and some neutrals. So um, I thought that might be nice for the um, shadows. And if you look inside the hydrangeas, um, you do see bits of, of green and in the inner part. So um, I was reflecting you know, what I saw with that. But here we're just starting to create the form. Um, on the shadow side of the hydrangeas, and then I will come in shortly uh, and start to build up the lights. But right now I'm just finding my way for where I want the shadows to be. On the next stage, I started bringing in a little of uh, color on the tabletop just to sort of get a value in there. I may adjust that later, but I want I want at this point to have the whole canvas covered. And now I'm going into adding some of the light. Um, that central hydrangea, you know, I want to be pretty important. I used more brushwork there, but I'm thinking of this painting as coming in on the left and seeing where the light is on those two or three hydrangeas there, and then coming over to the hydrangea that's on the tabletop. So I'm ending with that light. So I'm building up light. I'm not putting as much uh, white and brushwork on the more distant hydrangeas since those are in the shadows. Um, there might be little places where I'll have a few little lights pop out, just the nature of hydrangeas, even the ones in the shadows. Sometimes there's little petals that are jutting out on the edges that will get clipped with light. And uh, I do like that about hydrangeas, so you'll see that I put some of those in. This is just a close-up of some of the brushwork on that central hydrangea. You can see some of the colors that I put in underneath for the shadow will pop out here and there. And um, I like that. I don't just have a gray underneath, but there's little bits of the greens and the pinks um, in a neutral blend underneath so I can put that white on top and the white really pops out. And here we are with the finished painting. You can see it, the background was a little warmer than it, it uh, looked in the earlier photos. And um, this is strawberry hydrangeas. So um, I hope you enjoyed um, seeing this painting develop from start to finish. And um, Thank you so much for being part of this lesson. If there's anything I can do to help you on your artistic journey, please feel free to be in touch with me. You can follow me on Facebook and on Instagram, and also visit my website, patfiorello.com. Uh, I am also on Daily Paintworks, so you might check out um, my body of work there. So thank you so much, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something, and happy painting to you. Take care. Bye.